guys, this is NFT Girl, aka Lex. And Tommaso Sandretto from Blockchain Creative Labs, Fox Entertainment Web3 Media and Creating Technology Company, launching Crapopolis NFTs with an ancient Greek themed comedy series. We are here on the edge of NFT, the podcast bringing you the best in NFT from ancient Greek to the futuristic. Keep listening. Hey there, NFT curious listeners. Stay tuned for today's episode and find out how today's guests came together in classic Web3 fashion through a chance meeting at the airport. And how ancient NFT chickens are plucking their way into mainstream animation future. And how Tom Cruise and the Container Store could help create life-changing experiences for today's guests. All this and more on today's episode. And don't forget, we put together a little soiree called NFTLA just a few months back that brought out thousands of the world's most innovative doers in the NFT space. Head to 2023.nftla.live to get on the whitelist for tickets to our bigger, bolder, better, but also just as intimate and impactful event happening in Los Angeles, March 20th to the 23rd, 2023. See you there. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features NFT Girl, aka Lex, and Tommaso Sendretto, Chief Revenue and Investment Officer of Blockchain Creative Labs, BCL, Fox Entertainment's Web3 Media and Creative Technology Company. NFT Girl has recently partnered with Blockchain Creative Labs on their upcoming utility-focused Crapopolis NFT launch. Originally from Venezuela, Lex, better known as NFT Girl, is a collector and host of the shows of the joy of NFTs and If You Know You Know. She has curated over 500 art pieces and collected over 150 NFT products over the last two years. NFT Girl's mission is to uplift artists and creators, enable connections within the Web3 community, and educate the masses about Web3 and NFT. Lex is also featured as a collector at Sotheby's and is recognized among the top 100 most influential community leaders in the NFT space. Bit about Tommaso. He oversees and creates alignment between all of BCL's teams that affect revenue generation to ensure effectiveness and maximize profitability. Profitability. Furthermore, as Chief Investment Officer, he is responsible for setting BCL's investment strategy, vetting business opportunities, and managing portfolio companies. Prior to BCL, Tommaso was CEO at Soul Resorts, where he doubled the company's property portfolio and led the pandemic emergency and turnaround. He also co-founded SF Partner, a New York-based lending platform with more than $650 million in transaction volume. Tommaso began his career as an M&A investment banker at Citibank. BCL provides content creators, IP owners, and brands end-to-end Web3 solutions to build, launch, manage, and sell NFTs and fungible token content experiences directly to their fan base and audiences. Hey, it's really great to have you both on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. Could, could we get some qualified right. candidates, you know, like guests or something, man? What's going on? Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Louise, <laughs> Think about blowing up the the uh, backgrounds here. Amazing, y'all. Amazing. Wow, great to have yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. In um, in typical Web three fashion, this came across our desk um, pretty pretty recently, and uh, we couldn't resist having you guys on the show to talk about this incredible partnership between uh, BCL and the NFT girl. Seneca team. It just sounds like a total whole room. Uh, so how did you guys connect? Yeah, I'll, I'll start Lex and then you can tell me where, where I get it wrong. Um, <laughs> okay, know, perfect. B- BCL, BCL is really 
uh, you know, Fox effort into Web3. And, and it's, it's very easy um, for the community players and the community um, um, members to understand that you can't really go very far without uh, true leaders in the communities and in the space. And so um, we work with other, other partners such as um, MoonPay and MoonPay um, gave us a couple of names that they thought would be relevant. And then we actually attended the NFT 100 with Lex and uh, we didn't know each other back then. But, um, you know, she came out as, you know, one of the top 100 most influential NFT uh, players in the space. So it was obvious for us to do that. And for the Zeneca team, uh, one of our team members, Matt, who um, knows, has known Zeneca for a while because he did a couple of our block projects before. And um, Zeneca was a fan of his. So that was a, a very easy connect as well. Did yeah, I'm, yeah. Well, he did on his part, but I there's a part that he doesn't know, which is how I connected with the MoonPay guys, and that was totally random. At an airport, I was coming back from uh, NFT NYC, and I'm start I I I'm waiting for my bags, and I start seeing this baby, and this baby's like smiling it back at me, and I'm like making the baby laugh, and then the dad comes in and he looks at my shirt and I was wearing like an uh, Ape Fest uh, merch shirt. He was like, oh, were you there for the NFT conference? And I'm like, oh yeah, uh, what what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm with MoonPay. I'm like, okay, I know who MoonPay is. And then we started to, to chat after that. And then I think like a week later, he was like, hey, I, I have some um some folks that would love to talk to you and uh i mean we, we hit it off pretty easily i'm a fan of rick and morty uh and i saw bcl in south by southwest with what they did with dolly parton um and so i had seen them around but i i hadn't met them in person so it was just really cool to start that conversation with them yeah definitely yeah and 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 it's a really cool cool things come together dan Harmon, fox entertainment um and this this crapopolis is is a chicken inspired nfts we understand um ahead of the debut of this new comedy uh crapopolis uh and like you said dan Harmon's with rick and morty and, and community um uh, very exciting um everybody loves chicken inspired content <laughs> you know so <laughs> tell us a little bit more about what the details are yeah well i i think you know, we had this unique opportunity of building um, on, on this incredible name, which is, you know, Dan Harmon and Rick Mort. It's, it's such an incredible quality of um, animation and content. It's, you know, I've had the chance to see a couple of their, um, a couple of the episodes so you guys are, are in for a treat. Um, but once we started, you know, cooperating and after the launch of BCL within Fox, we really thought this is the perfect IP for us to collaborate and really do something around uh, Web3 and, and also around um, involving the community and the fans in terms of a variety of different options. Um, you know, just a couple of words on the show. The show is based in ancient Greece. Um, basically, they're reinventing everything and it's in family not trying to kill each other and you know, there's three and chickens. We chose the chickens because it's three main, uh, basically, um, currencies and one of the olives, the shoes and the uh, sandals and chickens. And so we went to the chickens, which is obviously a very important part of the of the show. Um, yeah. Nice. I mean, I love that. I actually got a chance to study uh, ancient Greek when I was in high school. Um, so I look forward to maybe some fun references there from the... Uh, you know, you got the Iliad, the Odyssey. Is, is this is a, it reaches back far into the tradition of storytelling. So uh, I'm sure there's going to be some subtle nods to that with with folks like this on the team. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's going to be spectacular. And then they weave in the whole concept of blockchain, and you'll see like the, we literally weave the entire throughout the entire season and the past and future season the whole content concept of blockchain and references, and and you know, so it's going to be very fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I, I, what, what are we thinking in terms of utility here? I mean, you guys have such a, such a set of a treasure chest of assets and possibilities to choose from. I don't know. Do you want to know the things that I can't tell you or the ones that I cannot tell you? Which ones do you, do you guys We know? always ask just, if you just get it out of the way and you tell yeah, us exactly. the things that we're not supposed to hear, then we know at least, right? No, I, I think that we have a, uh, you know, we have a, such a long, long 
roadmap with this IP. So we kind of have to build this up slowly what we can do. And we're really starting with, um, you know, the key items like the token get and merge. You're going to have a, um, um, you know, talking video libraries. You're going to have a lot of access to IP because you are a fan and because you really want to participate. And long term, more medium term, we'll be able to vote on certain um, on how the um, episodes end or trends or who survives, or who gets resurrected in the future. So there's tons of way that we can work with the writers to really uh, build this, uh, this, uh, this, call it the, the chickens and the NFTs within part of, within the show. And, and hopefully this is a 10 plus seasons, right? In 10 plus a season we'll be able to put into to really let the, let the fans really drive the drive the, the narrative in there there's also a few couple of things that i can't really share with you guys that are going to be a lot of fun for everybody but yeah and so i guess the, there's nothing impactful that happens in the land of nfts and web3 without partners and community and and we have you know you both here today you know partners in this venture so how, how are we all working together to bring this project forward and also with other partners like third-party influencers and whatnot like what are y'all doing to really amplify this thing and get it moving well, yeah so uh i can just share just the partnership that we've had so far. Um, I've really built this community uh, or, or my community that I'm part of for the last two years. And I am very um, always curious to learn new mediums within the space, uh, whether that's, you know, regular traditional art or photography um, and now some films and TV shows. So it was just like a natural uh, curiosity that I had to learn more about it. So the first step that we took was to to have uh, the team from BCL and Cropopolis on the If You Know You Know show um, to pretty much explain uh, how did this uh, initiative come about, what's BCL all about, and kind of what you touched on a little bit uh, previously on like the utilities and the fun things that new fans can um, can utilize, uh, you know, to their advantage. So for me, it was just more about, hey, I hear about this new way of utilizing NFTs in the medium, which is TV film. And I want to share with the people that I talk every single day um, what I'm learning about them. So that was kind of like the the first step, the, 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 which is the most natural one, I feel. Yeah. If I if I can add just one thing, I think that we're all here in the we're trying to educate and with Lex as well, I think is what really brings us together is try to onboard as big of a community and really um, educate as much as possible, right? Which is why partnership with Lex was so is going to be so successful. Well, there's no doubt about that, I think, right? Um, and so uh, will there be an NFT girl uh, character floating around in this animated series somewhere or something? Anything cooking on that front? That would be fun. I don't know, but but Lex, I mean, seriously, like the, when you think of distribution channels to reach uh, and elevate your community, right? It seems like, and there's so many different forms of traditional media that are right there in front of us. Nobody's really kind of cracked that nut yet as far as like somebody kind of crypto native with a crypto native community really making their way into the mainstream. Is that something uh, y'all are thinking about on your roadmap? Uh, I don't know. I think that all of those are really exciting possibilities. And I think that Kropopolis is the first show, as Tommaso and I discussed before, of like this really long-term road of having Web3 initiatives with traditional um, media. And I think it's the same for me. This is just the first experiment on what a collaboration can be. So I don't know the details on how it all will play out, but uh, I'm just happy to, you know, start that relationship and and see how they do and and how can I I can keep helping and then if I end up on a TV show as a, holding a a chicken, then that could be a possibility. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but but I don't know I I don't know uh, the details on that so far. But that'll be cool. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, it, it's it never um, ceases to amaze me how much of this industry um, has sort of grown from serendipity. Uh, you know, you guys met in the airport. 
Um, you know, how Jeff, Ethan, and I got together was quite random. Um, we talk about it a little bit, I think episode 100. Um, I, I, you know, we've gotten advisory clients at the airport. We've, we've, I, I've, I've sat next to someone that ended up sponsoring NFTLA. Um, you know, you just never know what, what's going to happen in this industry when you, and, and that's the power of that mix of the physical and digital world coming together and, and why we need events in our lives in addition to like, you know, thriving on Twitter spaces and, and Discord and all that fun stuff. So it's really exciting and um, I'm sure not that unusual um, uh, in this in this crazy space of ours. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about uh, collaborations here, but but maybe just sort of understanding a little bit more about your respective roadmaps for this year. Um, you guys are, are doing this cool project together, um, but this is the only thing either of you is doing. So, so just taking a step back and learning more about your own individual roadmaps um, might be helpful. And then we'll see who you meet at the next uh, airport. Lex, you can start. About what I'm working on? Yeah, yeah, would love to know more okay. like, about. Oh my like, gosh! The more I say, like... the more I've committed myself <laughs> <There's> like... to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can share uh, on an individual path. We actually just launched um, me and my team uh, the Joy of NFTs Gallery, uh, and so that was a show that I created, kind of uh, making reference to Bob Ross, uh, the Joy of Painting. So on there, I wanted to open up the conversation between artists of the space and collectors, um, and then also see into the creative process of each artist. So we have like a section of the show where we have them uh, take a word and then start a sketch based on that word so people can see how they start creating and then how that turns into the final product, which they then they turn into an NFT. Um, and then we uh, were able to land a independent gallery space on Super Rare, which is one of the biggest uh, art one-on-one marketplaces uh, in the NFT space. Uh, so all the pieces that are created on the show then go uh, for sale on the Joy of NFTs gallery. And then recently, thank you to BCL, they started their own collection of, of fine art uh, by purchasing two of the pieces uh, that were uh, auctioned off in the first drop. So we have drops every single month and BCL uh, was able to participate on the very first one, which I think it's... Um, very telling about like their intentions and and what the um the the importance of giving back to the creators of the space which is i think the heart of uh, the whole nft ecosystem so that's that's a little bit about what what i've i've been doing on on my uh individual lane uh, and we have many drops in the coming months uh with that gallery and that show that i'm really excited to show very cool. Yeah. I, Tommaso, go ahead. I had some time to think. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. It's well, I had to line everything well up. Very <laughs> well I had to line everything up because it's been so we have so much work and so much. The heavy lift is huge right now to get Cropopolis done. I can't even tell you the team hasn't slept in three or four weeks. And um, that's number one. Then we have to develop like from, you know, Minte on Wednesday and Thursday are just the beginning. The future is where we really keeps us up at night and make sure that we keep on producing and keep on delivering because it's kind of a responsibility, right? The fun, the fun start, the fun starts in literally this week. Um, and then, you know, we also have our projects with the WWE, as you know, we hold, we hold the IP rights for WWE, where we're doing constant drops every month. We have uh, the USFL, um, you know, as you guys maybe know, not Fox owns the um, uh, United States Football League. And so we're doing a whole uh, player token, team tokens launch around there again to uh, provide better utility to both the players and the fans um, and then we can't forget they're back to entertainment to the mass singer uh, we have the mass verse um, that we that we keep with this always alive every season and um, yeah and then we have two or three new projects that we're cooking on the side um, that obviously are um, um, still under wraps but very exciting and nevertheless we have to 
keep keep in touch with all the different communities and all the different influences and and how we can actually respond and produce the best that we can for the needs of our communities because they're all different well um it's safe i think it's a safe space where i can admit that um i was a huge wrestling fan when i was growing up um i had my hulk hogan uh hulkamaniac wrestling buddy and and i used to try to get behind stage and those guys were my idols and um you know, I, I I just think when you when you think about collectible assets and sort of fan loyalty, um, it's something about that community that's just really really special, and it just continues to live on, like in in like evolve uh, over the last like few decades. Oh, it's it, incredible! It, the, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just I agree with Josh. Yeah, it's a richly complicated and and beautiful art form. I think most people agree at this point, and yeah, you know, movies like The Wrestler. Uh, I think that was Mickey Rourke was in. It was a really intense movie, and there's been some some really impressive content made about the world of uh, of wrestling. Yeah, but go ahead. No, for us, it's just a great opportunity to speak to a different um, community and a different audience, right? Uh, Corpopoli speaks to a very specific audience the WWE is a completely different audience and and again our goal is at at, at at you know at Fox at large is always to onboard as many people and to drive them all to web3 as far as possible and so having the opportunity to work with these IPs is is really an incredible an incredible way to do it so uh I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of a left turn here before we end the interview portion of the of this and and you know Lex you mentioned something fascinating about kind of giving people a prompt and and sort of asking them to create a sketch around some things but you know uh little known fact jeff josh and i have all at least studied to a small degree like comedy improv of course you really enjoy like the improvisational aspects of this show um clearly you guys have some some really uh great synergies uh in in sort of collaborating and 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 making creativity happen so I'm just curious, maybe just for Lex, maybe for both of you, just kind of like, how do you think about uh, prompting, right? Creativity and collaboration and making those things happen. I just ask on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how we do it. We, at the beginning of every show, uh, I, sh I share with the community, hey, I'm going to have, you know, this artist and this artist, and it's going to be really cool what do you think would be uh the the right word to to inspire them and um and for them uh and then i we select a random word from there and then that's even better because then once the people see the the final product it involved everyone it involved the community and it involved me and it involved the artist so everybody's kind of in it in the creative process and I think uh from for me personally as far as like coming up with creative um creative things I think it's um honestly just brain power <laughs> like sometimes I just sit and in silence or maybe with some music most of the time it is in silence and I have like an internal brainstorm in my head. And I think at the end of the day, the one thing that I try to answer is what can I do that can be different and it can stand out because in the world of NFTs, even though it's very new, um, you already see a lot of people doing kind of the same thing. And people are getting known for being kind of a derivative of this other well-known project or um, yeah, you just see a lot of like similarities in, in different projects. So for me, when I come up with something that is kind of the one thing that I ask myself of like how I'm how I am going to be different um, and, and why uh, why it, why do I want to be different? So answering kind of those two questions is always the, my exercise yeah. for coming up with with anything. Yeah, I like it. What new am I bringing to the equation? Yeah. Uh, but that having been said, I think we might have to uh, steal your technique and have like a word of the episode that we uh, put put a vote out on for Twitter and we have to like incorporate into the interviews or something. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. It's the best, best way. Tommaso, any comments? No pressure. No, not at all. I think I th <laughs> no, I think that, you know, for, for picking up on what Lex was saying, 
this space moves so quickly. You guys know better than I do. You guys have, you know, some of the biggest leaders here. And it's so complicated. It's so time consuming to really try to stay at the forefront and provide value and value the, the last for time, right? And not things that just like come and go and disappear in our fads. Really long-term values are, are what we really uh, try to try to try to achieve, which is the most complicated thing to do, I think. Yeah. Well, and, and, and just, just one last comment on that, which I do think is interesting, again, reaching back into Crepopolis being set in Greece. And like, it, it's this really wonderful mix of coming up with new things, but also recognizing the roots, right? And making sure like that you, all the, all the stories always lead back to the same but imagine, ones, right? Im imagine how he speaks to Fox, right? We are the, like an old school, um, you know, media entertainment company that now is dealing with Web3, talking about ancient Greece and I love it. NFTs at the same time together, right? It's just like, it's, it's quite an incredible, it's a unique, unique opportunity that we're having here. Very cool. Oh, Jeff, you're muted if you're asking the question. I am. I am actually. Actually, I was just uh, just wrapping up this segment here. Uh, unique opportunity all around to create something new, different, uh, and to partner with some amazing people. So we're really excited to see where this goes. Thanks so much for sharing with us the details. Um, before we uh, we head over to the next uh, to the next segment, is there anything timeline wise we need to let our listeners know about uh, about what to expect here? Well, guys, we're launching this week. It's happening. Wednesday and Thursday are the big launches. If you've been lucky enough to be on the very important clackers list, uh, you're on for Wednesday. And uh, everybody else is like me is on for Thursday because I'm not part of the VIC list, unfortunately. We have very strict rules and we've been we've been instructed a certain way. So, um, yes. yeah, this is the week where everything happens. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. And we'll we'll have them. Uh, yeah. we have some folks from VCL on Wednesday on the if you know you know, uh, show in the afternoon. Um, I think we're still locking the time. It might be five or seven p.m. Central Time. Uh, but I think that will be a nice kind of last conversation before the the gates open. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, we we're re really excited to have them again on on our show. Um, if you know, you know. All right. Well, congrats. Uh, that's amazing. Um, we'll be keeping a close eye. But let's move over to segment two now, where we talk a little bit more about your personal perspectives on some things. It's called Edge Quick Hitters. It's really just a fun and quick way to get to know you a little bit better. There's 10 questions, and we're looking for short, single word or multi word responses. Not too deep, but we may dive in a little bit here or there. Um, we'll just alternate between you two if that works for you. You guys ready to jump in? Ready. All right, Lex, we'll start with you. Question number one. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Uh, Nokia phone. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like it. school. Love it. Love it. Uh, Tomasa, number, uh, number two. What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? I think I'm going to have to go more old school. I think it's, it's actually phone cards. You know, they had these phone cards in Europe where they have like weird images on it and yeah. there were collections about it. So that's what oh, I saw. Not, do you have any laying around? Those are like, I got I do. I do. My mom, my mom actually kept a few. It was just very nice. And she kept a few for me. Nice. First OG phone card uh, NFT collection coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, cool. Question number three. Lex, what is the most recent thing you purchased? Nothing fun. <laughs> Doesn't have to be. <laughs> I think I think I did um uh some organizing bins. <laughs> for, okay. yeah. That's how you know I'm adulting because now yeah. I find organizing uh exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I would say that's like my recent purchase, but it's not exciting at all. <laughs> no, I dig it. That's good. That's good. Uh Tomasa, question four. What is the most recent thing you sold? Funny, speaking of adulting, I had to sell my motorcycle. Oh, so, I, I know, I know, I know, Boy. but it's okay. It's for it's for better, for better. It's yeah, you know, okay, it's for the best. Did, did you Just uh, increase did you get your some... chances of surviving the next five years? Exactly. <laughs> did you were you getting some um, external pressure there? Uh, yeah, I plead the fifth. You know, for, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't Let's say, say. <laughs> you can't Let's... say. That says it all. That says Your it all. Significant other is going to watch this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> From the minute he got a motorcycle, his mom didn't want him to have one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nice. 
All right, moving on, guys. Question number five. Lex, what is your most prized possession? Uh, that was an easy one. I would say my family. Hmm. Roger that. Question number six. Tommaso, if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, and experience that's currently for sale, what would it be? I'm going to go. Don't judge me right now. But I, I would love to spend the day with Tom Cruise flying around on, on, on planes and everything else. I watched Top Gun and he really brought back my entire store of emotions and memories. And then I've seen some of his YouTube sounds like an epic, looks like an epic day. And that would be awesome. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Nice. I saw I saw Top Gun 2 yesterday and, uh, you know, got the, the extra comfortable lounge seats and and really like you know, immerse myself in it. And and what an incredible movie in terms of, you know, bringing back all that, those emotions that I had like back watching the first one, like they did a great job with, with this movie. Uh, probably one of the best sequels I've ever seen. Incredible. Apart from the Corpopolis lunch, the best thing I've done this summer was probably worse. Though. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. And yet you still sew the motorcycle. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Dang, you're rubbing I in the. Oh. I know. I'm sorry. I'm I'm yeah, sorry. mock. Yeah, someone didn't want you to go mock 10 on that thing after seeing that movie. <laughs> All right, y'all. Question number seven. Lex, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? my open-mindedness uh i would say too my open-mindedness and my ability to adapt i think those two things are the mm. things that have allowed me to have the best experiences in my life yeah makes a lot of sense makes a lot of sense how you got to this uh, spot right here on the show actually right mm -hmm. so question number eight Tommaso, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would that be? Oh, um, is compulsive organization a personality trait or something? <laughs> Being OC, right? I think that I works. Know. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. works. Speaking about bins, 100% agree on bins. It's great. It's a, it's a field day. I knew that sparked like a little something inside of you, brother. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Question number nine, Lex. What, do you, what did you do just before joining us on the podcast? I did. And if you know, you know, uh, space uh, in Spanish. Oh, cool. We do. We do the Spanish ones on Monday. So that was uh, right before this one. Nice. Fun. And last one, Tommaso, question number 10. What are you going to do next after the podcast? I'm going to get on calls and work <laughs> for the rest of the eternity. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right. We're making fun things happen, though. We do appreciate yeah. it. That is Edge Quick Hitters. Thanks for sharing, y'all. We appreciate it. Uh, okay, well, uh, before we wrap the entire episode, we do have a couple things we want to do. First and foremost, we want to make sure all of our listeners and fans know where to follow you all and everything that you're up to, both individually as well as for the project. So, Lex, let's start with you. Where should folks go? Uh, on Twitter, I am uh, at NFT Girl. Uh, and then you can find all the links to the gallery and all the websites on the link on my bio on Twitter. And then on Instagram and TikTok, I am NFT girl art. NFT girl wasn't available. So <laughs> we got that those handles on there. But everything goes back to Twitter. If you ever get lost, all the links are on my bio there. There you go. Tommaso, how about you? Yeah, we have, uh, you know, Twitter is going to be Cropopolis and, and Blockchain Creative Labs, BCL, um, and same thing on Instagram. We also have another uh, Twitter and the animation domination, which is the other for all of our content as well, which is where we can find us as well. All right, beautiful. All right, y'all. Well, I think we've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventurers on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers to make this journey all so much better. How? Go to Spotify or iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnmt.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. Look us up on all social media platforms by typing edge of NFT with no spaces and start a fun conversation with us online. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content.
thanks again for sharing this time with us today. Thank you, guys. The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We are learning as we go just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.